Sup blokes, I'm Francis here with two of the members of Devil Skin, Jenny and Paul. Hi. Hey yeah. folks, how's it going? Blokes? Good. Good? It's going great, yeah. Loving it man, we're, we're pretty happy at the moment, couldn't be better for us as a, as a band, it's about as happy as you get. <laughs> a release coming out, you know? Yeah, hard out. Yeah, um, so for someone that's never heard of you guys, how about sort of just describing what Devil Skin is, who Devil Skin is? <laughs> Um, <laughs> four musicians from the Waikato. Um, um, All with sort of different rock tastes, I guess. Yeah. Um, different ages as well. Yeah. Different ages, different rock tastes, but we come together and, and write music and have a great time. And yeah, but hard to try to describe who we are. But um, I mean, the the music. Once we got together, that the music came really, really naturally, and so we became an entity once we started jamming together and. We realised that pretty early on in the piece, I think, that we had this cool, cool band, and so um, yeah, it's, it's just sort of snowballed pretty much from pretty humble beginnings, and and now we get some radio play, and we get people coming to our shows and stuff. But yeah, <laughs> don't, don't ask me what it is. <laughs> it's 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 singing and it's screaming and it's hard guitars and then there's mellow bits and there's ballads and yeah. you know it's all a mixture. It's <laughs> kind of schizophrenic, but yeah. it's, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we enjoy what we do. So and that's <laughs> awesome. Go. Like on that same vein, sort of, how did you guys actually start out and come together? Because there's a bit of a family aspect involved. There is now, mm. <coughs> but before we were all family, um, Jen was <laughs> Jen Once was upon a time. <coughs> Jen was singing in a road road band called Slipping Tongue, and they sent me a demo when Jen was like 16 or something, and I just became their their biggest fan and followed the band for ages. And then um, when the band fell over and Jenny was between things and not doing anything musically, I put and stalked her, grabbed her, <laughs> we all got together and bang, that was it, you know, um, Nail and I have been friends for years and years, Gen you know, we've all known each other for years, yeah. mm -hmm. um, our original drummer that we had was just a mate who was sort of helping out and he, um, he sort of couldn't do a tour that we got booked for and so I, I press ganged my son, my 15 year old son into playing drums for us and yeah. so he placed, replaced this 50 year old with a 15 year old and um, yeah, it's been no looking back. Yeah. So Nick's playing in a band with his auntie now, <laughs> yeah. and and my auntie evil twin on guitar, and um, you know, it's yeah, it's yeah. great fun. Because you guys have grown heaps in the past, like especially the past two years. Mm. Yeah, what I've seen. Yeah, thanks. Um, how does it feel going from like the smaller bar gigs to then playing the festivals like Homegrown and Westfest and stuff like that? Well, pretty stink, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a dream yeah, come yeah. true. Yeah, it's and amazing. We, it's we've done our fair share of shitty gigs, you know, with other bands and with this band. We've played some some little I mean, crappy little towns to nobody and stuff like that. But um, you know, a gig's a gig. I get just as much. Well, not just as much, but. I get a pretty big buzz out of a really good rehearsal, you know. I still oh, get yeah. the chills and the goosebumps and feel fantastic. And and to get out in front of huge crowds like um, Homegrown and Westfest mm -hmm. and stuff like that, whoa. It's, it's, just, just, it's a dream come true. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Do you prepare cool differently for it? Um, not really. No? No. 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 I mean, for us, a performance is a performance, you yeah. know. Bonus if there's people there. <laughs> 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 and it's a big stage and we're not knocking into each other, you know. But the preparation and the, and the feeling like... We all get butterflies before we go mm. on. We get our little rituals, you know, and we're trying to focus and get out, find our zen before we go and play. <laughs> yeah. And and then you might get out there and there's only half a dozen people, but you still got to have, you still got to be in the right yeah, place, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, where would you guys like to see Devil Skin in five years' time? Uh, a few more albums, um, <laughs> um, overseas. Yeah. Reality um, TV show each. <laughs> uh, Kardashians will be used up by then, so. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to be able to go and do the whole international thing, um, and yeah, to get international airplay and um, just still be kicking it, really. Yeah. Like, do you guys want to see this really as your career? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's, your career the, and your you know, it's all yeah. any of us want to do when we grow up is be in a rock and roll band, you yeah. know, <laughs> tour the world and release albums and make videos and documentaries and. Yeah. All that good stuff. All Keeping that good stuff. Just, just being in a band, you know, <laughs> like any it's day. Bring to that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's just what we strive for every day is you know making music our lives and yeah, mm. you know, and, and it's getting more and more to the stage now where we can we don't have to worry about the logistics of every tour as much because we have people to do that now. We can worry about the songs and preparing ourselves and, and focus on the songwriting, which is that's a real bonus, man. Like I've yeah, been in yeah, bands totally. for years, I've never been in this situation. So yeah, it's all yeah, snowballed sure. and it's it's brilliant the way it's all gone. Yeah, wicked. Good.
All right, so you guys are about to release an album, yep. July 11th, We Rise. Um, I've heard it, and it's fucking awesome. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah. Cheers. Um, I already knew most of the lyrics from all the shows and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> there are a few that were like, oh, don't know that one. Cool. <laughs> awesome. But um, what I'd like to know is what your favorite songs are off the album. If you could, I know it'll change now and then. But. Uh, um, mine would have to be, um, my most favorite at the moment <laughs> is Surrender. Um, I just love that song. It's just such a great it's just a, a well-written song and it's quite eerie. Um, I love Burning Tree because the ending is just, you know, punches you in the face and um, <laughs> the strings in the song as well, when they go up towards the ending, it's yeah. kind of like, <gasps> and um, <laughs> uh, Elvis Presley Circle Pit, just because yeah. it's always been a favorite of mine, but it, it's just so punchy, like, yeah. it's, it's a song that I can... It's got that massive intro to it as well. Yeah, I, I'd love to see it, like, um, someone use it at a boxing match or UFC one day, you know, when yeah. they walk out? Yeah. To have that song play, that'd be so cool. But anyway. <laughs> Combining our music with violence. <laughs> it's always yeah. something that's always quite special, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, favourites, oh, they change every day, but yeah, I'm pretty much stuck on Surrender and Burning Tree, personally. Mm. You know, um, Burning Tree is just so... Um, atmospheric and it's just got so much space to it and just shows an, uh, another side of Jenny's vocal and, yeah. and um, just adds to the light and dark on the album and um, Violation is pretty hard to go past because it's just such a smasher and it's got so many foul words in it <laughs> but um, yeah it's, my favourites change every day as well Yeah. but you know when we had to put songs out you know demo songs for the album we had to cut out about seven or eight songs that we really? all really wanted to mm. have on the album. It ended up like fist fights, blimmin' Jenny, blimmin' beat up nail pretty badly. <laughs> um, I, I gave Nick a good hiding. Mm. We just couldn't, we just couldn't agree on what songs to leave off, so we had to have this big vote and, and cull them all mm. down. So the second album's already half written, <laughs> but, but we've all got favourites that didn't make the album, so yeah. it's kind of a. <laughs> <laughs> Would you play those ones as sort of special ones at a live set or something like that? I know, we'll play oh, yeah, them anyway, yeah, play them yeah, every play set. Them, yeah, you know. We do like minimum hour and a half set now. <laughs> yeah. so. yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, so what was the writing process like for this album? Was it like sort of two people that sort of spearheaded it? Or like did Nail come up with a riff or did everyone work together? Um, a little bit of both, you know, mm -hmm. like um, the first two songs we ever wrote together with the first rehearsal was Fade and Little Pills. Mm -hmm. and Nail pretty much came along with a skeleton of those and we just sort of banged them all out together. Jenny wrote the lyrics for them. Um, and the song, there's um, a couple of songs of mine that I've brought along and we've just sort of hammered into shape. So we've all had a little bit of adding a riff here and there and, and stuff, but um, we actually locked ourselves away, went to a beach, went to Tyra and locked oh, ourselves nice. away for a weekend for a writing weekend. Yeah. And mm. Half the album came up out of that. And, yeah. and it awesome. was just so easy, you know. It's, we almost have to stop ourselves from writing songs because well, I haven't finished that one yet. Oh, I've got this other great idea. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Let's ditch this other one. What's your other one? Really, day? like, make sure we get this one down first before we move on to our next song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, so we had no problem coming out with new songs all the time. And, and everyone adds um, musically to the, to the mix. And um, Jenny and I write the lyrics. And, yeah, it's, it's just such an easy process and a lot of fun. Yeah, it's good that it... So it seems like it comes really natural. It to, does. To it really band, does, yeah. you know. It really does. Yeah, it's yeah. the easiest thing. And having too many songs isn't necessarily a bad thing. Nah, nah. <laughs> we just need more time and a day to dedicate to just band stuff. But yeah. we're getting there slowly, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, now, on the album, was there a theme for the album? Or is it sort of, is each song its own individual being? I think each song's its own individual mm. being, to be honest. Like, it's, yeah. There's, I mean, if you compare, like, Fade to Violation, they're completely different songs. One's a ballad, one's a... Angry, angry Keep song. Stomping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, that's that's kind of how we are. Like, we don't sort of go, okay, we're gonna we're gonna sound like this, you know? Yep. Um, oh no, it doesn't sound metal enough, or oh no, it doesn't sound. That song's too soft. Enough. Let's put a bazooka solo on yeah, it. Yeah, like, <laughs> like nah. we just it just, <laughs> just comes out, and we're like, sweet, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's no no thing really. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. With, with this, I mean, the way the order and the structure of the album, we, we spent a lot of time and okay. agonised over the, over the track listing and getting the order right and stuff. And mm. it's, you know, it's got to be like a trip somewhere. It's got, it starts yeah. with a big punch and it's got low points and high points. So it's like a roller coaster, you know? Yeah, because I feel like the album is a song in itself with how it sort of builds yeah. soft and then goes really heavy. 
<laughs> yeah, and then, yeah. That's what we wanted, you know. That's yeah. where it needed to be a trip that we don't want people just to put on and hear a couple of songs. We want them to play the whole album from start to finish, and that's yeah. that's how it's been made, you know, to listen to it like that. But, mm. Yeah, you know? yeah well, awesome. Thanks. That answers that question there as well. So, <laughs> um, this is just a natural one. So, do you re record Little Pills. Mm. Was this because its original recording didn't quite fit sound wise, or you felt like you could do it better? Um, probably the first one. I mean, we, we recorded that. We cashed in some favours with um, a record, an engineer at a recording studio in Hamilton, who a um, good friend of ours, and he loves his food. And now does quite a bit of diving, so we, we hooked him a few scallops and some crayfish, <laughs> and I did a bit of hunting. We got him some nice blooming venison back steaks, and he's like, "Chair boys, come in and I'll record you." <laughs> so we did. We recorded Fade and Little Pills like on the cheap a yeah. long time ago. Now yes, three years ago. Yeah, two thousand and ten. Eh? It was two thousand and ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a while ago now and, and yeah. we did it as a demo more than anything and um, when it got picked up by radio it was um, it was never really meant to you know no yeah. it was just going to be a demo so we stuck to, to the, have the opportunity to re-record it but I mean it's the same thing like like Jenny's first band Slipping Tongue when I got their demos the freaking drums were recorded in the toilet sorry <laughs> the guitar was out of tune but this voice comes in and I got yeah. goosebumps you know yeah. and, and there was something special about that and I think once you record a good song, it's a good song, yep. and it, it will get through um, either way. But for us to get the the um, you know chance to record it properly, obviously, and it all comes down to budget at the end of the day, yeah. Francis. Yeah. You know, it's like the more money you can throw at it, the shinier a song you're going to have at the end of, <laughs> yeah. the end of the day because you spend that time cleaning up the sound and making everything perfect. You know, yeah. but. Um, yeah, we, we were really surprised and really, really happy with the attention it got, and especially the fact that it came from the audience. You know, like the radio didn't want to know it in the in the early days. Yeah. Can't hear a hook in there, X Man. No, nah. or oh, don't think it's the sort of thing our audience would like. I won't name names here. <laughs> <coughs> and then um, they played it a couple of times, and people just kept asking for it and requesting it. It became the most requested Kiwi song the Rock's ever had. Really. <laughs> but um, you know, it's it's been really it's a real buzz for us that it's come from people rather than coming from industry pressure or, or yeah, yeah. the fact that we can buy ourselves into, into marketing the crap out of a song, you know? Yeah. We couldn't. We just put the song out there and oh, it just did, it it just did its own thing, you know, and people like it. So I, I think it sounds a lot better now. We've given it the treatment it deserves, you know, <laughs> and, and it's got Nick drumming on it now. Okay. The original didn't, you know? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Because how did it feel being the last band to record it? Oh, man, what, was it the last band last record? Album? Last, last album. album. Yeah. Yeah. Last album. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of sad. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's a huge thing to be a part of, just mm. the, you know, the history of the place and everything. And um, Yeah, it's, it, it was really sad because we saw how sad the, the house and engineers and all yeah. the people that were involved with it were because mm. it's the end of an era. But yeah. um, really stoked that we got to record in there. Yeah, yeah. We're just so happy studio. with it. Yeah. And we're just so happy with the sound and everything. And, now we've broken, broken the studio so no one can do it again. <laughs> it's gone. It's that gone. final day just wreck everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs>
pretty much with the tour, it's 19 shows in like a month and a half. And the first uh, the first 10 days are in the South Island, we're doing nine shows. <laughs> so, Whoa. Yeah, it'd be busy, a little bit busy. Yeah, it's like four shows, uh, one day off, then five shows on. Yeah. <laughs> and then we fly back up to North Island. Um, yeah, so it's going to be pretty full on, but we're all really excited. And yeah, we're, we're driving our bus down there, so we'll be yeah. you know, cruising it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big dirty bastard blooming lax out in. Yeah, got the chains for the tires, you know, <laughs> the snow. So we better get some chains. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In case. <laughs> <laughs> better safe than sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, so, f- before a show, what was what's your sort of both your pre routine yeah. ritual? Yeah, the rituals. Yeah. <laughs> or do you have one? Yeah. Um. I well, my is <laughs> getting ready. <laughs> so because yeah. I, you know, it's the makeup and the hair and the outfit. So yeah, yeah. it takes a few hours because I'm a girl. Um. But it's also um, <laughs> warming up. Um. So going through exercises and stuff and try not to talk, <laughs> um, which can be hard sometimes because you know when you're at bars and stuff, and people yeah, want to yeah. talk to you and it's just like hi hi yeah. And I'm like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's fine. Be yeah. <laughs> Um, so I normally hide out the back, <laughs> uh, but I yeah I normally have like um, a cup of uh, ginger and lemon tea, um, just for my my throat and um, <laughs> a banana. I've got to stop taking those on stage because apparently you've got to stop leaving them on stage. <laughs> Someone's going to break their neck. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that happen um, a dozen cartoons. Because I used to drink a lot. You know, I used to drink um, wine and whiskey and stuff on stage, and I, I've changed my lifestyle. So I've got none of that now when I um, when I play. I might still drink, but yeah. Not when I play now, um, so it's more about tea and bananas. But you're going on stage and you're halfway through a song, you're like, <laughs> doesn't look good. <laughs> doesn't quite fit the whole theme of the. No. <laughs> yeah. But just um, yeah, chilling out, listening to good music, warming up, and um, getting ready is my thing. And mm. what about you, Paul? Well, I like listening to good music first, um, and just keeping away from people and just finding a little zen space. Yeah. I usually like to get a lemon. For a gig, I like, I like to have a lemon and uh, tip uh, tequila down my throat and then chew the lemon. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's about that's about my warm up ritual, really. Yeah. Just trying to get my fingers and convince them to work properly for the show and 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 just get the vibe of the room on. You yeah. Know? Um, like Jenny was saying, she can't go to the bar anymore before a gig. She can't walk through the bar anymore at a gig. You know, when we're all I getting ready and stuff. You know. Mm-hmm. We can we can go to the bar, me and Nail and the rest of us, and we might get oh, yeah, yeah. but Jenny goes near the bar, it's bah, people off photo selfie, Jenny come yeah. here, meet my friend, you know, it's like she just gets totally mobbed. And this yeah. we got we got a taste of this a uh, couple of the gigs in the South Island last year and it was like, Whoa, this is pretty freaky, man. It's <laughs> yeah. like really intense. We've got to hide her somewhere. Yeah. We can't she can't just go t- I'll just go to the toilet, you know. No, you can't. Jesus, hold it. You hold it on. Yeah. You hold on. Two of us will come with you and stand you outside the door. No, they just don't leave her alone, you know. Here's your bucket. <laughs> so, and, you know, at a gig, it's, it's, I think it's, well, we all think it's pretty important to find that zen spot, you know, that just that happy blooming you mm. yeah, space yeah. in your brain so you can focus on, on what you're playing and stuff. And um, although you're out there being sociable and stuff, sometimes you just don't want to see anyone before a gig, and you yeah. just need to be locked away to afterwards, you know. Yeah. But um, it's uh, everyone does something different. Nail likes to do ironing. I'm <laughs> he does. Not kidding. He, he'll, he'll, he likes to iron out all yeah. the deals can shirts. If I've got a dress that needs ironing, he's yeah. got <laughs> you guys got any ironing? He's getting ready for the gig. He's fucking rocking away to White Snake. Usually, he puts yeah. on a White Snake yeah, DVD. Yeah, yeah. Rocks around. He always Jack takes Daniels, his iron to ironing. shows as well, and we've got a um, little <laughs> mini ironing board in the bus now, so yeah. he can just iron. He's the iron master. We call him Iron Man. Power in the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's a unique one right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> a couple of go. other fun facts <laughs> about the mail. Is, um, <laughs> he used to be an underwear model. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yep. And he also represented New Zealand uh, at wrestling. Yeah. Wrestled mm. around the world. Did straight up. Yep. You know, proper like Olympic wrestling, not the WWE blooming. Neck snapping shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, but yeah, he's, you know, he's, he's been there, done that, <laughs> and experience. Yeah, yeah, experience. Hell of a guitar player, and yeah. um, lives Andy and breathes the band. Right. You know, yeah, wrestling. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so, what has the what have the practices been like in preparation? Have you been practicing more? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, again, we're kind of holding ourselves back from. Oh, I've got a new riff. <laughs> yeah, to be no. working on the set for the for the tour. And, Oh, let's just jam this Dio song, shall we? And oh, yeah, we have a little bit of a muck around, but yeah. 
you know, everyone's everyone's been working on getting their gear together. Jenny's been re- really working hard on her fitness and, and, mm. and healthy eating and stuff like that. Um, and we've all just been sort of zoning ourselves, getting prepared for this, you know, epic freaking tour, which yeah. is going to be over way too soon. I think yeah. you've seen, yeah, you know. It's going to come off, we'll come off and we'll get, <laughs> now what? I don't want to go back to the day job. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys have a favourite song to perform live? Like that the sort of, either the crowd react to the most or that you enjoy most playing? Um, I love performing Burning Tree just because of the, the massive ending because it's a big build up um, and I always love uh, Little Pills because you yeah, get a major reaction from that yeah. um, but I guess you know it, it's been a while since we've done um, shows since Start of Revolution came out so I'm guessing that's going to be another song that people sing along to so yeah, yeah. Mm. a bit of a buzz mm. but um, oh, I just yeah I love doing all of them <laughs> yeah, yeah same I think Hard probably one. one of my yeah. favourite live songs is the Whale song which never made it to the album but just a big Stompy, good crowd one, you know. Mm. But I guess Revolution's probably my favourite favourite out of the li- out of the yeah, album to play live. Favourite just <laughs> just, <laughs> just because um, it's violent. It's got a bazooka solo on it. <laughs> <laughs> and vi- yeah, Violation. Um, that's a great song to do live because if people haven't heard it before, they kind of shit their pants because it's yeah. like you know it starts off just screaming. <laughs> You know, what? Yeah. <laughs> and they're looking at me and they're going but you're not singing so <laughs> it's not us mate <laughs> yeah. yeah so it scares a lot of people and yeah, yeah. it's quite funny but um, <laughs> it's always fun to do yeah so. wakes up the pit yeah scaring people <laughs> scaring people is such fun and on the album you, you would have heard the track The Horror okay, yeah. it's just to lull people into a sort of false sense of security and it's got some little creepy bits in there and that, that's the one with the like sort of the kid. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's um, Nail's daughter. daughter. Yeah. yeah. Jenny's got a cleaver. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> we sort of chopped up some little screams of Jenny's, and that's got this quite a loud one in the middle. We wanted people to jump, and like no crap, when we were when we were mixing it and putting it all together, we were jumping every time. We knew it was there. Next minute, wow! Like, oh, Jesus, oh God! And got it to play. It got to play um, the album to a couple of friends for the first time just on the weekend. And this uh, friend of mine was sitting in the car. She's going, oh, this is awesome. This is pretty interesting. She turns it right up. And I thought, I'm going to turn it up. <laughs> and she jumped and wet her pants. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Oh, that's exactly that's, what you're going for. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, wow. People are losing control of their bowels to our music. That's we a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made it when that happened. That was funny, man. <laughs> she was <laughs> bummed out. Yeah. <laughs> Weed out. Anyway, get um, <laughs> So, are you guys look, so you guys are looking to tour internationally? Yes. At some point, because I remember in September in Aussie. Oh, nice. Yep. Because I remember after Westfest, I remember a post about Ivan from Five Finger Death Punch mm. saying that he'd be keen as for you guys to come oh, and tour. He wanted to him. kidnap Jenny and yeah. <laughs> marry her. <laughs> no, we had to put him a prize him off her, man. Yeah. Gotta leave her alone. So yeah, yeah. I mean, um, those guys have been hellishly busy. Like, yeah. Hugely. Um, we haven't had a real good uh, chance to catch up with them, but you know we're keeping in touch with them. And yeah, that's good. Definitely, yeah. it's a band we'd like to jump on the bill oh. somewhere and mm. cash in on their crowd. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were just they were really taken with us. It was really cool. Yeah. Guys out of Megadeth loved their set, and it was just that's, corn. That's that's so good. Mm. Yeah, man. It's yeah. Like, mm. It doesn't get any cooler than that. <laughs> They've having those sort of like idols almost, like yeah, yeah. totally. Coming up to you and saying, you know? "I like your music." Yeah, childhood yeah. heroes oh, watching your band play. It's like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so cool, man. It's a pinch yourself moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, last one for the tour. Um, do you have any bad tour habits? Habits? Well, mine, I think I've got under control now, and that was drinking. Yeah. <laughs> drinking too much. <laughs> um, but you yeah, probably not enough rest, so I've got to really try and take it easy for this tour. Um, Paul, well, we've got a microphone on the bus oh. and some speakers outside, so we can make funny noises and scare the crap out of whole towns at once. You know, <laughs> and cows and, and yeah. <laughs> probably my worst habit is being immature with a microphone, <laughs> scaring folks and mooing at cows yeah. and stuff like that. We cause stampedes, man. We drive through the country and there'd be all these cows there. Grab the mic, Nails <laughs> no, the best at it, <laughs> and they just stampede. It's yeah. like man, it's like, whoa, we're leaving a trail of destruction behind us. This is awesome. But yeah, have fun with people, and yeah, yeah. yeah it's just it's just a whole lot of fun. Um, 
bad habits, nah, probably none. Just leaving my wet clothes, wet stage gear around for um, my son to pick up. Because yeah. <laughs> he hates that, and I've been doing it for him his whole freaking life. You know? <laughs> pick my clothes up, mate. <laughs> Can we expect any tour vlogs or anything like that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Photos, updates, and a, and a blog, yep, yeah, definitely. Awesome. <laughs> First off, I'll just go straight in. How would you compare Devil Skin to the other bands that you've been in or are currently in? Um, uh, uh, well, I was in a band called Slipping Tongue. Um, I guess, I don't know, that, that, bed, the, <laughs> that band was... Um, uh, it, it, it went through stages, like it started off just kind of rocky and then it went kind of heavy and then mellow. That's kind of what Devil Skin is now, but all together, you know, yeah. like, um, I guess may have been a bit he heavier than Devil Skin. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's hard to say. Um, yeah. um, all the other bands I've been in, I mean, pale in comparison to what I'm doing now. I've, musically, I've never been happier and with a bunch of people I'm playing with and, and what we're achieving, it's like, to me, you know... I'll, I'll probably always say that my very first band was the best band I've ever been in because we, we just felt cool because we had long hair and started wristbands and were Tights. pretty cool. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, this, I mean, this band is just achieving so much more and has so much more potential than anything I've been a part of before. Plus the fact that all these bands I've ever been in, we've never had lots of people at our shows, you know, yeah. <laughs> especially girls. It's like, well, this is something totally new for me, you know? Yeah. But um, head and shoulders above the other bands I've, I've ever been in, you know? That's awesome. <laughs> How long has it taken to get you, to get where you are now, like from, not just with Devil's Skin, but with just your music? Well, <laughs> it gets different for both of us. Yeah, I've got, I've got a couple of decades on Jen, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, singing since I was 15. And, um, but Paul, yeah, he's been doing it pretty much since as long I was 17. As I've been alive. That's only two, two years more than you. I started when I was 17. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's back last century and that. But um, yeah, it's been a few years. And it's, I mean, the rock and roll thing in this country is hard enough. And the, just the fact that I've been around so long, I've seen a lot of really good bands come and go. And it's easy for bands to fall over if they don't get support or, or the drummers girlfriend doesn't want him to play in the band anymore or whatever I mean, there's so many different little variables that can screw a band up yeah. and um, it's what we've got here I think we all realise is something pretty special you know so we're all 100% sort of committed to it yeah awesome um, alright what have the main what have been the main inspirations um, for your own music um, I mean I've musically for me um <clears throat> Vocally would be uh, Mike Patton. Uh, I love Fake No More. <laughs> big Fake No More fan, big Mike Patton fan, um, with all his other stuff as well. Too many bands to name. <laughs> <laughs> but I love like Coheed and Cambria, and you know had the chance to open for them yeah, twice, yeah. so that's been cool. Yeah. But I was a big fan before that happened. Yeah. Um, and like the Mars Volta, I'm a big fan of. Um, well, was <laughs> it's broken up. Um, then I love like the old school shit. Um, you know, I love Dio and yep. Judas Priest and stuff because that's what I grew up on. Um, but it all sort of has influenced me to to be who I am today and who you know how I come across vocally. Yeah. Um, and plus, you know, as a teenager, I was right up to like new metal, <laughs> yeah. like Slipknot and Corn and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's me. Uh, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Judas Priest, Uriah Heep. All the big old stuff, yeah. you know, I guess when I was quite little, my sisters were playing it and I just, man, just went mad on it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've just always loved that music. I, mean, I like all sorts. I, I got into punk rock years and years ago, Sex Pistols and stuff like that. Ramones, just because of its, um, I don't know, its uh, antisocial nature, I guess. And, <laughs> you know, I thought the, you know, the Ramones were pretty damn cool. I thought the Sex Pistols were pretty cool. But musically, as, as I've sort of developed, it's been more about the music and less about the image and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, the great songwriters like Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath and, yeah. and Jimmy Page and stuff like that still inspire me every day, you know? So, and, and then obviously doing the, the axe attack, I get to hear a lot of music and <laughs> there's a lot of new stuff that really inspires me as well. And yeah. It's just everything, anything and everything. I, but I get, I guess it was all the classic old stuff 
that that really spun my whizzer in the early days. Got yeah. me to you know on the got road you to into doing it. Rock and roll <laughs> and ruination. Yeah. Because yeah. how long has it been on the Axe Attack now? <clears throat> Twenty seven years. It's a decent effort. Yeah, it's the long, <laughs> longest running show in New Zealand broadcasting history, except for Country Calendar. <laughs> You'll get them one day. One day, man. <laughs> I need that country theme. That's what I need. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a few years, but um, you know, it's still something I'm passionate about. It's still something I love doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, what's the weirdest thing that you've seen at any show? Not even one that you've been playing at, but, you know. Well, uh, I don't know about weird, but there's a guy that comes to our shows and he... He turns up to a lot of shows actually, and um, a lot of people who watch this might know him. Um, what's his name again? I always forget his name, but he wears jeans and he wears a, a denim shirt and he has it unbuttoned. He's kind of got like um, longish hair to about here, and um, he, he always dances. Yeah, I know. Always he dancing. dancing. Yeah, yeah, see, you know the guy. He comes all and he loves us. Never, yeah. never seen him have a drink. He's like so rare. Oh, yeah. Dance. But he's, you know, and he's so happy. And yeah, yeah. It's just like I had a dance with him the last show he was at, which is actually um, Paul's birthday, Gemini party. That's right. Yeah, um, right. yeah but it's just, you know, first, first time I saw him, I was just like, oh, look at that guy. And then, you know, you see him at another show and you're like, hey, it's that guy. <laughs> um, you can always pick him out. Yeah, yeah. He's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the craziest thing I've seen in the show was, was after one of our shows and <clears throat> there's a certain annoying woman up the front and she'd been hassling Jenny all night and trying to grab and grabbing me and I don't mind so much and, and then she's we're sort of finishing and we're all sweaty and drippy and horrible. It's the last, last time you want someone to give you a cuddle, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah. just let me get clean first. Huh? <laughs> and this chick, she grabs me and just about pulls me over into the crowd and I said, whoa, watch out, you know? And then she sees Nail coming, no, no, she comes over and she grabs his hand, she pulled him right over, he lost his balance, and he sort of landed on her face, his face landed on her face, and he must have exhaled out his nose at the same time, and this big <laughs> block of snot just went all over her face, and he was just mortified, going, oh, fuck, sorry. And <laughs> I don't know what she did because I was like crying and laughing <laughs> then. But Jenny's like, it's all right, she was a bit of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That was hilarious, man. We cracked up. That's ruthless. He doesn't do it often, but yeah. he makes it work when it does. Don't cuddle yeah, the does. band if they have a cold, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no one wins. No one wins. <laughs> um, any advice that you'd give to fans or people wanting to get into music, especially in New Zealand and stuff like that? Don't give up. Don't give up, man. <laughs> yeah. Don't give up. Follow your dreams. <laughs> yeah. Not really. Yeah. Um, yeah, just don't give up. you just got to keep keep persevering because it's all about perseverance, you know. Yeah. And and there's, there's, a, there's so many variables that, that make up a band at any one stage and there's 101,000 different factors that can change anything at any given time. So you got to be passionate about it. If you don't have the passion for it, don't even bother, you know. You've got to love what you're doing and, and you've got to stick to your guns yeah. and fire them occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few fan questions now. Cool. Um, only a couple. But uh, Frank asks, Jen, do you still sing Fix uh, to knots in your hair? <laughs> to what? To knots in your hair. So like, I guess when you're de-knotting your hair or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, I listen to it every, every once in a blue moon. Like... Because you know it was one of my favourite Slipping Tongue songs. It's a great song. Yeah. I listen to it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I'd love to cover it in Devil Skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> uh, <no. laughs> um, Louis asks, "Can you make the Auckland gig all ages?" We got a shake. Sorry, from Louis. The, um, from the manager, he it's said. The it's yes, the venue, the venue. Yeah. sorry. Maybe if, if, if Louis's real keen, if he gets hold of us, maybe we could sneak him in for a sound check or something like that. Mm. But yeah, it's, it's a real shame this time around we haven't got any all ages gigs on this tour, but we definitely want to do some, man. We know it's important and we really want to meet, you know, our younger blooming fans. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we all know how ugly it is when you can't go to the pub to see your bands play and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And finally, Carrie Ann wants to know what team you're supporting in the Football World Cup. Uh, Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go the Warriors! Um, Germany because I like the uniforms, but I'm a rugby player so I've yeah. totally been ignoring the soccer. Just can't help it, you know? Yeah, I'm a bit 
guilty of the same. Yeah, soccer, soccer. <laughs> it's called it's called dive ball. ball it's, <laughs> it's all about diving these days. I can't take it seriously. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, and finally for us, what would be your blokiest trait? <laughs> Um, well, um, being a female, but, um, uh, you know, I think a lot of people uh, see me, you know, on stage in the little outfits and then, like, now I'm all dressed up sort of thing, like, boganish. But when, um, you see me out at Pack and Save, you know, I'm, I'm the one wearing the Ugg boots and the, um, the shitty sweatpants with chocolate on them and, um, you know, like, I, I went to the supermarket the other day. No, I went and got an instant kiwi, scratchy, and I got ID'd. Probably because um, I had a beanie on and a giant Dickies jacket and sweatpants and Ugg boots and I looked like a four-year-old going to the snow. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 pretty um, you know I, I love home comforts so I'm I'm pretty blokey when it comes to that. Um, yeah, these guys see it all the time. Band practice, I turn up, no makeup, and just like mm, fucking let's do it, you know. Like, <laughs> Farting and shit everywhere, you know. <laughs> what was the question? Blokey's <laughs> trait. <laughs> trait. Uh, probably going to pubs with my blooming steel caps on or gumboots on. Yeah. You kind of forget, and it's like, can I come in here in those? It's like, oh. <laughs> or drink not? out of a glass, you know? No, but yeah, just being too scruffy most of the time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. For, for public consumption. <laughs> That's all right. All right, well. Thank you, guys. Thanks, thank Francis. You. I'd like to thank Ding Dong Lounge as well. Thank you, Ding Dongs. Yeah. Thank you, Ding Dong. Uh, thanks for your time, man. Appreciate no, it. All good. Cool. Yeah. We'll catch you guys later.